Hey everyone, DJX Tech here for the Underground Sound, and uh, we are starting to revisit our interview series here. Um, we had the interview series going on for a while, and uh, then we then I kind of stopped it because of a feud that two people that actually um, that I interviewed they had a feud against each other, and then they started kind of like causing havoc on the YouTube channel, which is kind of like a no no, you know, like doing the thumbs downs and like leaving inappropriate comments and everything like that. In either case, joining me this evening uh, today is uh, July thirty first, two thousand twenty two. Uh, joining me once again is Jamie Salazar, otherwise known as Within Me. Jamie, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm I'm uh, excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I think it's long overdue that we have you because, uh, like I said, um, you know, I don't. If, I think if it weren't for that feud that was going on, then then this probably would have happened a lot sooner. Um, but at, at that time, you know, like these two guys, like like, uh, so they had like they, they were like just real tight and everything like that, you know. And all of a sudden they had a falling out, but I had already interviewed the both of them, and you know they would hop on and on the respective, you know, quote unquote enemies, uh, interview, like once again, as mentioned, there would just be kind of havoc. So I just decided to give it a break for a while. And then, you know, um, life happened and so forth, but here we are again, I'm hoping to make this a regular thing because I really like talking to people and getting to know different perspectives and everything like that, because obviously, um, everyone has something different going on in their musical life and whatever can bring a little bit of knowledge to different um, to different musicians is just all that much better. So let's start with this because I think we have a good amount of information about you from making a musician and um, you know and just the uh, just the interview that we had done uh, when uh, when we did the written interview for um, Indie Pulse Music, right? Um, so let me know about yourself just not in great detail but uh you know let me know about yourself uh just the cliff notes of how you got into music who your inspirations are and kind of like close that off with a bit of an explanation of how you came up with the name within me okay right so um i've been into music since i can remember um since i was a, a small child uh just gravitating to melody song um, you know, singing the words to commercials and not really knowing what I was doing, but really felt that there was something um, above me there, right? Um, and started writing my own songs probably about the age of 12. So for the better half of, I would say, probably over 20 plus years, I've been writing my own material, my own songs straight from my heart no covers just you know for a long time i kind of just took a break from the covers and really dove deep into my own songs within me comes from um this idea that it's a lot less about me and more about the the universe really so it sounds like it's uh about me because obviously the name suggests within me um but it's really about all of us it's it's uh like when you say you know within me you're really talking about yourself in, in a way um so it's this kind of circular idea that we're all kind of connected in some way at least energetically and that's something that i really like to bring to the music um you know you know how it goes you, when you write music you put something together it's 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 your own perspective um but i think i touched up on this before and and um in the making musician where you know if you can bring your own perspective and 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 um you know just the things you've gone through hopefully that reaches to to somebody else and that's kind of the basic general idea behind within me and you know i like your take on it because i do feel that if you put passion forward in your music and and you know you put that different kind of energy into it then um then ultimately everything will pay off because, you know, um, some people obviously are just looking at the money, you know, and right. I, I think that those people are the ones that really like, cl like crash and burn very quickly. Um, that's not everybody obviously, but you know, but, sure. uh, for your part, you know, I think the first song that you ever sent to me was Skywalker. Mm -hmm. 
I think that was the first one, if I remember correctly. It's kind of like sticking in my head because, you know, obviously I think Luke Skywalker, right? Because I'm just kind of right. like Star Wars geek and everything like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I felt it. I felt I felt it there, and I really like the like the uh, like the like the feel of it, where it, it kind of like you you're using kind of like real wor world instruments, right? Um, and also using uh, a DAW at the same time, obviously, because um, are you adding like actual like real drums, or are you using like like uh, like patterns on a uh, on a sequencer? Like like how are you working the um, the drum portion and the bass portion and everything like that? Because I know that you play guitar. Mm -hmm. We've obviously witnessed that, but I'm just curious as how your your process is with the other instruments. Well, that particular stuff, I think that was like, you know, I recorded that stuff probably 2019, late 2019. Um, at that time, a lot of that that stuff, I think it was like a five song EP. There were three original songs with two tracks being, um, you know, remixed by a DJ friend of mine. So they were like, you know, uh, like kind of more like early 90s kind of club sounding. Um, but my original songs that came off of that EP, um, those songs had been around for, gosh, probably 10 years. So I felt like it was time to actually record them. Um, the reason why I hadn't record the, recorded them before was just, oh my gosh, it was just, you know, life. And, and I had a kid and I had to get serious about, you know, um, you know, real life, right? You know, getting a job and really just you know, doing the whole being a, a normal guy kind of thing. So, um, which is not bad, you know, that's, that's a responsibility, but I, I'd really sat down a guitar for probably about three or four years. And I started thinking, you know, well, maybe I can really do this, you know, maybe I can really, um, give it a go again, which by the way, and I know, you know, this, it takes a tremendous amount of energy and, and time to just muster up yourself enough to, to pull it off, you know, um, that's why, you know, touching on what you said about, you know, the, the money thing, it's, it's always besides the money. I mean, yeah, money's wonderful, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just has to be there. It's, it's, it's always going to be there. I'm always going to be making music until I can't anymore. You know, right. if, you know, uh, God forbid something happens to me, I lose my arms, you know, I'll still find some kind of a way. So, until this motor, this engine stops, um, I'm just going to keep creating. And that stuff um, was more organic, I'd say. That's why there's a lot of acoustic. I always start a lot of my writing with acoustic guitar or piano. And then I always feel like, well, if it, if it transitions well, it, if it starts out really well with a with a acoustic guitar, which is like the meat, then I can always tell if it's if I've got something. If, if it if it if it starts out great on an acoustic guitar or piano, then I know that I've I really got something. Um, so it's really just the blueprint. Um, so a lot of that stuff off that record was a mixture of, um, you know, um, acoustic drums and some uh, some sequencing. These days I do a lot more sequencing and, um, you know, um, sometimes I'll throw in like uh, some some samples, uh, some drum samples. Um, just the stuff that I'm doing nowadays is just so, you know, uh, electronic. Uh, I can't help it. I just kind of just, it's kind of just where I'm at at the moment. I don't really write for any, and I know we've talked about this before. I don't really write with a specific style in mind. I just kind of just let the time tell me what to do. So yeah, it's, it, I kind of bounce back and forth. I don't really have, I would like to say that I actually have a method to the madness, but there really isn't. It's just, it just, it just happens. It's hard. It's really kind of hard to explain. <laughs> uh, I, I think I think that I've kind of noticed that because um, you know, um, cats meow obviously is is uh, you know the comment that I had made about that on the show was the uh, you know, it's very it's very Depeche Mode and um, and very kind of like eighty synth kind of like uh, kind of like it's it's a catchy song. It really is, uh, especially for, especially for for I guess uh, people you know my age who kind of like remember that music or or, or are fans of that music, right? And we'll we'll get into the whole f being fans of bands and everything in, in a second here. But uh, so I could tell that that really because when I look at some of your pictures on Insta, right? Mm -hmm. I'm kind of like thinking like if I if I if I hadn't heard your music or if I didn't know what you were doing, it kind of like maybe look like you do some like heavy metal. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It, it definitely oh, yeah. has it definitely has that kind of look to it. So um so I understand about you having having uh. You know, just kind of like letting the moment 
take you where it needs to take you and everything like that, which is great because you're finding, you know, just really genuine and, and pretty much, a, uh, you know, divine inspiration there and everything like that. Um, let's talk about Cat's Meow real quick. What would you say was your inspiration for that song? Or right meow, right meow, I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, that song kind of just came out of nowhere. I had a bunch of stuff lined up before that, and um, it that one just came out of nowhere. <laughs> I just uh, I think I sat down at the keyboard one day and uh, I was trying to figure something out on another song, and and it just it just happened. And I I probably wrote that song. I want to say maybe twenty minutes. Um, it just it just comes in, you know, lyrically, um, sonically. It, it just I can hear it in my head before it happens. Now the trick is trying to get that as best I can into an audible realm for everybody else to hear. You know, that's always the the goal. It's always the trick. Um, it's always part of the frustration because I think I end up taking longer on pieces than most people would just because I'm trying to um, trying to get that out of me. Um, but that song just, it just happened. I, it just fell on my lap. It, I had no intentions for it. It just came out and it felt good. It felt like it was, you know, the time to do it. So I just, I went with it. I kind of pushed aside what I was working on and, and, you know, like I say, the time kind of told me, well, just, just do this one instead. And that one, um, inspirationally, I would say, um, I'm kind of just I'm using the metaphors and analogies of of right meow the cat um because you know obviously I'm a cat lover <laughs> but um it's really about just being yourself and kind of just 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 letting things happen inviting the spirit of you know um just good and 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 you know, great to kind of flow within you and whatever that may be. It doesn't have to be musically per se. That song's really about the individual just taking on, you know, um, believing in themselves. The power is is within you. Is 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 you. That's your that's your magic. And whatever that may be, whatever medium that is, um, is really what I'm trying to speak to. Okay. Um, so I'm still, I'm still trying to like circumnavigate this real quick. So when you say that you have that, you know, thing in your mind and you want to translate it, you know, into music and, and it has to be the timings, right? How do you, how do you feel that you work within yourself to kind of like make the timing correct? Do you like sit down and strum it out on a guitar? Do you, do you just like kind of like tap a beat to yourself? Like, is there... I know that you like, said there, there, there really is no method to the madness, right? But mm -hmm. like, obviously, there's a progression to sure. how the thought becomes an actual song. So, I mean, right. So the process, the process is uh, a lot of um, obsession uh, over what I'm what I'm trying to capture, and that goes into my my day job, right? So I work for a city, so. You know, there's a, a a a big amount of doing my job, but also a huge amount into kind of subconsciously trying to navigate this bigger picture and what do I what I call the the within me, you know, landscape. Um, for me, most of the greatest bands that that you know I listen to felt like their music came from a different from a different world, you know, like whether it be Nine Inch Nails or Smashing Pumpkins or Depeche Mode, it felt like it was much more than just the song, right? Felt like it came from like another world. And in this instance, I'm glad that that happens with my stuff, at least I feel like, but sometimes it happens without me really wanting it to happen that way. It kind of just takes on its own, its own thing. And I know that it does that just because like intuitively I feel it. So like, I'll just be driving down the road and sometimes it's kind of like a, like a little spark of, um, of inspiration comes peeking through the cloud in a way it's, and that I know is usually like met with like a lyric or like a, 
a chord progression. It's always relating back to the music somehow. So I would say for the craft of the songs that I do, I, I wish I could say it's like I sit down and like start like strumming stuff and I do, but it's not, it's like almost like it's so much more than that. It's more intuitive. It's more feel based. It's, it's even without instruments in my hand, it's without, you know, the pen in my, my hand and a, and a, and a pad. It's more just, constantly there um and it's distracting sometimes believe it or not it's um it's wonderful it's great but it's also very um it just takes over everything you know mm -hmm. i'll be talk i'll be talking to somebody and i'll listen to what they're saying but it's kind of like i have to pause for a second because other stuff is flooding in that's inspirational and a lot of times i get the whole like well you're not paying attention it's like i'm paying absolutely attention to you it's just right now something else is intruding into my mind that I, I i have to give you know credence to because if i don't then it's gone it's like it, and, and i start to know like where i navigate the song i know that i have something when i feel like the goosebumps you know what i mean when i get like the hair stand on the back of my neck off of my own things that's how i know that's where i need to go like i need more of that um, it's yeah, it's 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 a beautiful process. It's helped me learn a lot about myself um, and just the way that I am. And and I think that that's I, I don't think I could be here without without music. And I again, I, I don't mean to speak for you, but I'm sure you feel the same way. You know, music is just this this powerful powerful thing that um, it's extends far beyond space and time. You know, it's a it's a takes on this almost like a religious aspect oh absolutely it's amazing it's amazing so yeah so i don't know if that answers your question <laughs> but the way that the process it just it just i i, I have to I, I hear it all in my head and i just try the best i can to put that in a way that's in the real world and sometimes I do a lot of research and how, how to make that happen. Sometimes I'll watch tutorials. Sometimes I'll, I'll read, I'll read a lot of books on, you know, making music and how they got a certain sound. Um, sometimes I run around in circles. Sometimes I just, I, 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 you know, I research the crap out of something and then I, and then I realize, okay, just, I need to put that away and kind of just go with what I know and what I feel. So yeah, it's just a lot of a lot of time spent. I think I was watching um, your episode with Carlos, and you and you were doing um, a review of the the um, Blood on the Ivy song, and Carlos had said something, you know, about the the synth sounds in my song, and he said something about like, well, most likely this is a lot of time spent, even outside of making the music. It's a lot of pay attention to detail, and he's absolutely right. It's a lot of like I say, just obsession over over the craft, um, but in such a, a, a magnificent way. You know, it's 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 a it's 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 a hunger inside. It's it's a very positive thing. You know, when you when you have you know you have a job and you have to live in in a world where you you know it's it's you're happy, of course, and everything's great. But you know, you 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 know that there must be something else, right? Yeah. Um, and so. I kind of lean in the area of like, well, that's it. The, the songs, that other world, that's that's where I'm trying to reach. And if I can get that out to to people, so that way they can experience that, I I think that that's that's where I want to be. You're talking about music and and uh, you know uh, basically things that you. Uh, have to do in your daily life as an adult here and you have to circumnavigate through this entire world both worlds uh, for that matter um if a record company were to come up to you and uh which record deal would you prefer would you prefer like here we're just going to replace your income from work you you are completely in control you be yourself or here's you know 200 million dollars and we want to make you our style you know we want to make you our guy because obviously a lot of record companies have you know vested interests they, they do spend a lot of time with um with artist uh promotion artist development um if you just take a look at you know uh oh my goodness the the uh the, the lead singer of uh, of limp biscuit 
Fred Durst. Fred Durst. If you yes. just look at Fred Durst, right? Fred Durst, he didn't dress like that. You know, it, it that was that was that was all an act. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. we, yes. we, know it, we know it now and everything like that. But uh, maybe maybe when people were younger, they didn't. But the whole thing is that the record companies did that because they have a product to sell, right? So they made this, you know, 30 year old guy basically, you know, appealing to that uh, younger generation at the time. So if, if you had that choice, because like you said, money's nice, money's nice, right? If you're going to do this, then, 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 you know, I believe personally that everybody should be making some kind of money off of this, which, um, yeah. you know, everybody's just making it really difficult for anybody to make any kind of money off of music anymore whatsoever uh unless you do have you know the backing of a major record label but i'm i'm pretty sure that i know the answer to this but please explain uh which you would actually prefer and why the first option uh definitely without a doubt um i would i would i mean ideally um i would prefer to have you know, an income to where I can just do this a hundred percent. Right. Um, and if I could pay my bills full and completely with music, I'd be happy forever doing that. I don't desire to be, you know, at this massive level like over anybody or anything. I just, I just, I really just would love to be, um, able to do what I love to do for the rest of my life. And, and I think, but that's the ultimate goal for a lot of people, right? Um, so definitely the f the first option. Um, I can't take the second, even though that's kind of like it's kind of like the lottery thing, right? Would you rather a, a lump sum or a full payout? You know, it's kind of it's like that, but in a different way. I feel like the rewarding part of taking the first option would be, yeah, you know, you might not be making as much money, but at least you're doing something that you love to do, and you can hopefully sustain that for as long as you can as long as you're putting in the effort as long as you're putting in the work as long as you're consistently putting things out there for people to to uh to vibe to right yeah so um there's an integral part of of of, of this that I, I i i would never um feel right i couldn't look at myself in the mirror taking the second second option just because um I think there's a, a deeper quality there. There's a deeper, um, you know, there's more substance to to that world, to that that idea of of you as a songwriter, you as a as a, a creator. Um, that taking the sep second option would kind of be like I think here in 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 like how can I say in the in the world that would be the better option but like i feel like the deeper part of it the real part of it would be the first option so um yeah that would be a dream come true if that if that could ever happen um you know obviously that would be that would be awesome <laughs> um yeah so the first option all the way um like i said i, I wouldn't want I, like in fame people talk about fame too i think a, a lady told me the other day at work and she heard my music for the first time she goes i didn't know you made music and i said yeah i was like a lot of people don't really know i make music because i'm not really like i don't really push it out there I, I i just do what i do you know and, and obviously it comes out and she's like i saw you perform and i saw a video of you performing and 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 i saw your new video and she's like wow you're really you're really special, you know, you got something. And I said, well, thank you very much. She's like, you're trying to get famous, aren't you? And I said, no, I'm just trying to get out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's, that's kind of where I, where I uh, reside, at least in my, in my heart. Well, I mean, I, I feel the same way, obviously, uh, just cause you know, if, um, if I could do this, if I could do my music and I could help, you know, other artists, you know, um, go on with their thing and kind of just like substitute their income and just, just do what they loved. And that's just really important. I mean, I think that everybody should have at least a shot mm -hmm. in their, in, in their life, you know, just to kind of like break away and um, you know, whether, whether they be a painter, whether, you know, whether they uh, do music or whether they, you know, love cooking or you know, whatever the case may be, right. Somebody may right. want to truly genuinely be a flight attendant. You know what I mean? Sure. It just, it really doesn't matter on what somebody loves it's just mm -hmm. the fact that they should get a chance to to do it at least once and um and i just think 
I don't know. I just think it's wrong the way that, that the world is set up, like prohibiting people from actually from actually getting there. Like like you really, especially as a musician, right? You have to put tremendous amounts of effort in there into you know getting out there and into promoting yourself. And a lot of it, you know, obviously takes a lot of uh, a lot of money. So um, I notice you have a pretty pretty strong like kind of like Instagram kind of like like presence. Um, how do you circumnavigate your music? Um, with kind of like, you know, your online presence and how do you feel that, that it hinders and that it helps your music as well? Um, circumnavigating my presence on Instagram. It, it's, um, well, just social media in general, because social media, are you, are you just, are you just within me on Instagram or, or do you have like a within me <clears throat> Facebook and like, do you have other things going on? As far as social media, I, I, that's the only one I have so far. I tried to set up a TikTok, but that was like, all right, let me take a step back. That was kind of yeah. a little heavy there because I, yeah. I was like, you know, there's only I can only upload like a certain amount of like time <laughs> of a clip, like three minutes or something. And I was thinking like, how am I going to use this? So like, it's going to take a while for me to really figure out how I can utilize that to its maximum potential into what I do, even though there is a way, right? But it's just a matter of figuring out the time and how to do that. Um, so many things are done where it's like, I could be writing a song right now, or I could be, you know, there's, <laughs> how do you split yourself up in a million pieces and have each section partake in a hundred percent, you know, it's, it's impossible. So yeah. So, so right now, Instagram is the main social media platform that I use, um, which is great, you know, because you think, you know, 20, 30, 40 years, you know, ago, um, those things weren't available but also i think that it's those things that are available that make things kind of like a kind of like a pair of new shoes you know it's like it's here today gone today kind of thing um so i've started to notice that i've had a um a pretty good run with some people on Instagram, some people messaging me, telling me things like, you know, hey, uh, I listen to your music, you know, on Spotify, you know, and uh, I, I was listening to it at work the other day and it really got me through. Stuff like that is um, worth more to me than any, believe it or not, than any kind of check I could get because I know I've really penetrated in some way um the depths of somebody you know like like when i was younger and when i was going through all the bullshit i was going through um those are the things that matter to me the most right you know like somebody breaking ground into me to let me know that not necessarily that everything was okay but that i was i was valuable in some way that that, that things weren't always the way that they were because it was my fault. You know, the music told me that. The music told me that there was something else that was worth reaching for. And if I can do that for people, um, then, you know, I can essentially feel like I could live forever, you know? And Instagram has just been, a, and social media in general, but, but Instagram, since it's my main form, um, has been great in doing so. Um, just reaching people, Again, and you can do whatever you want on, on Instagram, so you can really make that world that you see come alive. And you can do that in a really horrible way, right? You know, I can choose to take a picture of myself in some weird way, but um, you can make you can create whatever you want. And if you're if you're doing if you're doing something in a way that at least gets somebody to think and kind of pause and not just think about you, but think about themselves in a, in, in a sense lyrically through a picture through an idea um again that's just that's what within me is about it's a circular kind of thing that goes around and so it's been great i think i could probably be a little bit more present on these things um but yeah like i say it's kind of, it's 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 tough you know like with the job and you know school and just life is just it's crazy, you know. You know, it's just it's it's a, it's a rat race out there. So, oh yeah. But yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. I think um, 
you know, I think platforms like Spotify, same sense, you know, that's a, I think this is one of the inter interview questions that you gave me where it was like, I, I think Spotify is a great, a great platform. Um, you know, it's, it's wonderful, but I, I feel like only if you've made it, if you're already at the very top is where you really reap the benefits of it. So in the sense, you kind of have to use it as like a promotional opportunity, at least for smaller artists, you know, but you know, it's again, these things weren't around, you know, 20, 30 years ago. So um, you kind of just got to take it with a grain of salt. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, it wasn't around, you know, like, like all my stuff was going on back in, uh, back in the MySpace days, you know, uh, and I mean, it was just, it was just a whole different world right now. Cause I just, I looked it up as, as we were talking about, cause I know that we were, we were, uh, we were uh, chatting about this on the, um, on the last show. So 60,000 songs are mm -hmm. uploaded to Spotify every single day. Yes. 60,000. So where do we go? What can we do? How can we promote ourselves and how can we promote different artists when, you know, you do have this super powerful platform out there because mm -hmm. Spotify is like everywhere in the world, I think, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so how do you kind of like break into that and, um, and get on people's phones and, and, you know, and on their computers and, and, you know, into their playlists and everything like that. Like what goes, what goes into, what do you think goes into making a hit? Is it just being yourself? Do you need that commercial influence? Mm, well, you definitely need that catchiness, right? Whatever. I mean, because, <laughs> well, music is, is so subjective. I mean, art is so subjective. So what I would deem great, you know, you might go, eh, it's not, that's nothing special there or vice versa. But I think ultimately having a strong presence on, you know, social media and Spotify and all these things probably, I mean, you want to have something about you that's special, right? I mean, something that's like more people can gravitate to in some way. And uh, I think a lot of people nowadays, you know, do the whole, I'm going to shock you, you know, shock value kind of stuff. Um, I think at some point that's kind of going to run the gamut, you know, because I think we've already seen probably just about everything. So um, as far as a hit, I think that it's just it, it's just that nowadays and I think ultimately always it's always been something that's going to be stuck in your mind. It's always that, um, you know, that certain chord structure or melody that's going to get stuck in your head. A lot of times most people don't really know what you're singing, what you're saying. <laughs> Um, so it's just combinations, man. It's just, it's just, it's like a numbers thing. It's just, it's, it's like, um, it, it's, it's really so hard to pinpoint really. Um, yeah. it's like a time and place thing. You, you, it's like, it's, it's in everything though. It's like movies, you know, you wonder how did that movie really become that big? Well, it was, it was, it was the time. It was a mixture of the time that it came into. It was, a, it, it was, it's just so many different combinations of life that 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 things happen the way that they do and trying to figure it out is is crazy you know it's it's tough because i don't know if if it works that way i mean maybe it does i'm sure it does in some way but then we go back to the question you asked me you know the the, the first option the second option would i rather you know choose to have control of my 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 music and my um you know my persona as an artist for a lower cut or would i go with the bigger cut and have somebody be in control of my my music and, and my image um it's kind of like it, it, i don't know i i think if you if you do pinpoint it then at some point if you do try to figure it out you know at some point you're going to run into that second option you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, um, no, I totally got you. Yeah, like, like you're you're gonna have to make a deal with somebody or something to give up a part of yourself, and 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 that's okay. You know, if that's if that's for somebody to do that, that's great. I don't knock that at all. I think that that's 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 their thing. But for me as an artist, I I wouldn't be happy with that. 
here's here's the thing with that, right? Is I understand giving up a little bit of yourself, right? But but sure. the extreme was was that you would give up your your entire image, you would give up your entire you, because that's what you're doing, right? Um, mm -hmm. So just just kind of like steering away from that, uh, like I'll tell you, um, I believe personally, it's a little bit of skill and a little bit of and a little bit of luck. Mm -hmm. Um, just because, I mean, I had done absolutely no advertising or anything like that. I actually had a record deal and, um, and, you know, and that went south completely because they stole all my rights and everything like that. Rights so from that point on, I was producing music myself. And, um, and like I said, my space at the time, I was just like constantly like, you know, hitting people up and I would, I would hang out with people and then, you know, I would, I would meet their friends and, you know, we would just keep on going in this kind of like, uh, in this kind of like circle where before you knew it, when I was done with my CD, I actually had to print a thousand copies of it because I had to, you know, give out a thousand CDs and everything like that. Right. Well, um, iTunes, my song sweet victory ended up somewhere, somewhere in the top twenties or something like that. Right. Um, at the time. And I remember I was taking a trip to England. I was actually taking a trip to Belgium to go visit my aunt and uh, and I had an eight hour layover in uh, in England. So I f kind of figured like, OK, well, I mean, I'm here. I got eight hours. I may as well hop out into London and, you know, go check out the sites and everything like that. Right. So I'm walking around, you know, here and there, you know, I'm grabbing a bite to eat, blah, blah, blah. You know, the day passes and I'm walking back to uh, to Queen Victoria Station to uh, to go to uh, to go to the airport and um, two teeny boppers two girls like 14 years old probably maybe something like that right like, run up to me and like oh my god djx tech djx tech like right are, are you d i'm like i'm like calm down relax relax yes i'm djx tech but you know hey i'm just a regular person just like you you know but can we get a photo can we get a photo can we get an autograph and that was something like like what you're talking about is is this is something that happened completely organically naturally mm -hmm. and it was just something that was kind of like really mind-blowing like wow you know what I mean? Like, I can't believe this is actually going on. Like, I have celebrity in a country that I don't even reside in. You know, right. I just gave out a thousand CDs to, to you know, to a whole bunch of friends and friends of friends and everything like that, right? So it was just this awesome experience. Um, so taking that into, into account where you're talking about, like, just having that kind of, like, combination of, you know, you're in the right place at the right time and, uh, and you just kind of, like, happen to have the right hit. So circumnavigating back to um, social media and everything like that, where you would talk about like giving up maybe a little bit of yourself and everything like that. How do you feel with, with, um, with collaborations? And so I don't know if I'm going to word this correctly. So you, you have a heavy presence on Instagram. You're not very, very heavy on slaps, right? Slaps, Carlos and I love slaps. Mm -hmm. We absolutely 100% love it. Right. Uh, Carlos met Russ rookie and, you know, a ton of other people from there, you know, they've been doing co-collaborations and everything like that. So, um, do you spend as much time on slaps? Are you open to collaborations or do you just kind of like think like within me has to just genuinely be within me? Oh no. I think, um, collaborations are amazing i mean I, I would love to collaborate with anybody who's willing to collaborate um on any level whether that be you know guest guitarist or vocalist or co-writer or anything yeah i i would love to do that i think i don't know i get the sense that like my style of music is kind of hard to pinpoint because you know i'm so like i, I do synth and then i do acoustic and then i do kind of stuff a little bit more organically so i'm kind of here there everywhere that it's kind of hard for some people to kind of gauge where I'm going or what I'm really about musically. Um, but I love it all, man. I, I, I grew up, you know, listening to a lot of hip hop um, early on, um, you know, early stuff, you know, Beastie Boys, um, yeah. a lot of Def Jam record stuff, uh, NWA when it first came out, you know, my, my, my brother showed me that stuff really early on, probably at a time where I was such a young kid where I probably shouldn't have been listening to that stuff. But, but I'm glad I did, you know, I'm really glad I did because it was so punk rock in, in a way um, that nobody's ever heard. I, I, I give credit to NWA in the sense that they were, um, they were like the Beatles, you know, they came out of nowhere and nobody's, nobody heard anything like that. So to me, that was very impactful. So 
that stuff to prince to you know like i say the cure um 80s stuff a lot of motown stuff my mother watched a lot of uh soul train when when i was really young so i saw a lot of that stevie wonder kind of stuff and michael jackson so i love all of it it's just the stuff that i that comes out of me for right now happens to be like synthy kind of 80s stuff i don't know what it's going to be tomorrow i just kind of just have to rely on my gut and my my intuition to tell me what it's going to be but um I'm totally open to collaboration with anybody at any time. Um, slaps, I've, usually the way Slaps works for me is like when I have a release, I'll throw up something up there. Um, I'll regularly look through and see what's going on. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of weird. Like you say, it's it's hit and miss with, with certain platforms and um, Slaps, I notice sometimes I get you know, people listening. And sometimes I think, oh, I usually get somebody listening on slap. So I should get it now. And you don't. So like I say, it's just, it's, it's kind of hard to, to figure out sometimes. Um, now lately it's been Spotify. A lot of people have been listening to a lot of my music on Spotify, which I'm really happy about a lot of listeners overseas, you know, England, Finland, right. Um, which is great. You know, I've had, I think most of my listens have come from Helsinki, Finland. So um, big shout out to Finland. Uh, those people are really taking in what I have to offer. So um, that's awesome. But no, as far as collaborations, man, I'm, I'm always open to to doing anything with with anyone as far as, you know, as a musician or like I say, co co-writer or, or just something. I'm, I'm, I'm always willing to do that. I think that that's I think that's what makes things go around. You know, I think we should be supporting people and each other more in music. I, yes. I I don't like how things are so separated. That's what I was telling you before about like, you know, genres and stuff. I understand we have a need for that. And and of course that'll never go anywhere. We have to classify things. I get it. But um, I think we should be uplifting each other as, as um, creators and just people who are just trying to put something good out there. When you create, it's something good. When you, when you express, it's something good. Um, and yeah, I can't emphasize that enough. So collaborating with people, whoever that may be, whether it be rock, hip hop, you know, synth stuff, whatever. I'm totally down for that. What kind of, uh, let me ask you, what, uh, what's your preferred, um, uh, you know, your your DAW, uh, your, your workstation, what's your preferred one? Because I'm, I'm old school and I just, I'm still working on Acid Pro, man. Honestly, I know that's like way, way, way like long time ago but i mean i'm still working on that and uh i'll do some stuff on logic but honestly acid is just kind of like it's still right there for me it's still very fresh in my mind uh what platform do you like do you like to use i work on um studio one presonus expert um i got into that I, before that i was working in um nuendo which is i think a like a sub of uh what is that Steinberg uh, Cubase? Cubase, yeah, yeah. So I got, I used to do things on this digital mixer. Um, probably, I want to say early two thousands. A friend of mine had this digital mixer, right? And this is before I knew about EQ and compression. So I just learned how to record my own stuff, and I listened to my old songs, and I go, man, I didn't know anything about EQ, compression, right. any of that stuff. So I started into a modern sense when I started getting a laptop and I, and again, like I was telling you, when I started thinking I can do this again after I had, you know, my kids and I had a stable job and I got into a place where I can really see what was really going on on the, on, on the, on the plate. Um, I got into Nuendo, a friend of mine had given me a copy and I thought it was pretty self-explanatory. I thought it was pretty straightforward. And then I, started taking an online mixing course for a year um and they so every month they would send you new mixes you know it'd be like one month it would be a country song next month would be a hip-hop song uh you know so it'd be all these different genres and then you send in your mix you work on it you send out you send in your mix and at the end of that month um you know you might get something like a you know keyboard or or a, a piece of software so my first month in i ended up winning um uh presona studio one they gave me the the daw which was amazing 
And um, ever since then, I've been working in that. And I find that from what I hear, I don't know, I've never been in logic or, or um, Pro Tools. I know Pro Tools is pretty much the industry standard. But um, from what I hear, uh, Studio One's kind of like a mixture of a lot of different DAWs, right? It's like a mixture of Logic, Reaper. Um, so I feel pretty comfortable in that. I've been working in that now for probably about a good three years, I'd say. So I feel pretty comfortable with that. If I ever collaborate with some somebody, I've collaborated before. You know, it's usually to send the stems out for full mix downs and things like that. So, um, you know, most DAWs are able to do that. So, um, but yeah, that's my preferred way is usually PreSona Studio One. I haven't used it. Um, you know, I've heard reviews on it. Obviously, you know. I, I, we tend to be creatures of habit, right? So, you know, yes. we kind of like, yeah, I got into this and that's pretty much where I'm at. It's uh, it's it's too bad that that they really don't do updates for it anymore or anything like that just because right. uh, that, that, that was the first one that I actually made like a um, like a 5.1, like kind of like Dolby stereo surround sound thing on, right? Is because that was their latest thing. But um, but hey, uh, you know, whatever works for the uh, for the individual. I mean, you know, you're doing great on it. You know it. And I like what you were talking about with the um, with the different mixes in the contest, right? Because that, I think, would bring a lot of musicians into maybe kind of like a uh, like a higher tier of production because, you know, not only are you working on a hip hop song, but you're working on a country song and then you're working on a rock song, right? So it might open up a lot of people's eyes to, um, to the different, uh, you know, genres of music that are out there and maybe create something completely original because as we know, not only is music a universal language, but it's something that is also uh, ever expanding, right? It's, it's, yeah. it's always going to be something different day by day by day by day, uh, which is, once again, I know I've said it many times on the show, which is why I love the Indian underground musicians because they are the ones that are really kicking out the um the new stuff and and it's not saturated like the uh, like the radio stations are and everything like that. So um, you know I'm pr I'm glad to be doing what I'm doing here, and um and so let me ask you as a, as a closing question here, what is the future of um of within me? What do you see going on? Uh, you know next tomorrow, the next month, a year from now. Do you have any uh, do you have any set plans, or are you going to get let the uh, universe kind of guide you where you need to go? Well, the universe is always going to guide. I mean, that, that that pretty much takes the reins on my my soul, so to speak. Um, as far as creatively, um, I'm always trying to push the bar. So the next, the last song I just came out with, I always think production wise, um, what do I need to work on? What could be better? That's the whole idea, right? Like, to be honest with you, like when I when I make music, as much as I would like to say I know what I'm doing, there's a lot of it that just kind of just at the seat of your pants, right? You kind of just, you start trying things and experimentation is a big part of it. Um, again, it goes back to the just allowing and inviting the creative process happen. Um, if I get stuck into a, 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 a point of view where I'm like, it has to be this or it has to be that, I'm done for. It's 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 not going to be authentic. So what I try and do as much as I can is just allow the process to be what it's going to be. And that doesn't mean stop. That means go, but just allow it to take you and listen. Right? Listen to to yourself. Listen to it's it's a collaboration between the universe and yourself telling you which direction to go. So the next song I'm going to do, I'm working on right now, it's called Example One. Um, I've given myself uh, a month to complete it. That's going to be followed up with a, uh, another video. Um, that is going to be, hopefully, in my mind, sonically better. Um, the idea is to make the songs kind of tie in together. I don't have enough time to create a full album because that can be very overwhelming. But maybe at the end of the stretch of, you know, five, six, seven songs, I can kind of lump them all together and create a record. But, um, yeah, just, you know, just move forward. And the process is um, to learn and discover yourself. So, you know, um, within me is a very big part of growing. 
you know that's that's the whole point of within me that you can hear my early stuff you know it's it's not necessarily the greatest produced or mixed but when you hear now you can see the gradual um you know change and evolution and that's the whole point as an individual right as a person you want to grow so that's my whole idea with the project within me is a big part of growing and i want it to be out there for everybody to see to see the journey right so um yeah just create 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 as much as possible get a ton of stuff out of my personal life out of the way so that way i can just do this more and more and more so I'm very happy to be doing what I'm doing on even at this level. Um, I'm very um, grateful for whoever does listen to my music because, you know, we have this sense nowadays where you put something out there and you're owed something. Nobody owes you anything. It, the, the fact is, is that people are listening to you. One person listens to you. That's just a, a, a blessing. So um, I'm very, very grateful for that. So. Um, yeah, just moving on to the future. Hopefully I can put out this next song within a month and I should have another song by the end of the year. So I'm planning on doing two more before the end of the year. And we'll be more than happy to promote it for you as well. Um, any kind of like closing words of wisdom if, uh, you know, if, uh, if, if, uh, if a musician had walked up to you right now and asked, uh, tell me something inspirational, what would you say? Well, number one, be yourself. You know, that's always gonna that's always gonna defeat whatever's out there, right? And and if it doesn't defeat the popular vote, it's gonna certainly defeat the you know, the entities around you, the the things that you know most people may not notice. And if you're in it for things that people notice, then that's a whole different conversation. But the realness of it is you have to be yourself, number one, because the saying is you can only, you know, be yourself. You can only, there's only one you. So whatever voice that is in whatever way that is, just let that come out and don't stress the small stuff. Just um, be open and willing for the invitation of the creative spirit um, and just let yourself go and have fun. And don't worry about what people are saying. Don't worry about what others are doing. Pay attention, but don't worry about what others are doing. You have to just, follow your path always 100 and trust in yourself that's at the end of the day um that's the biggest key thing is is just trusting yourself in what you're doing believe in what you're doing there you go i couldn't have said it better myself so uh jamie thank you very much for the sit down within me uh links are going to start popping up here so boom 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 wherever they wherever they show up these are going to be links to going over to uh jamie's youtube channel um his instagram account also in the uh, video description here below obviously you will find links to jamie's instagram account and slaps account and whatever we can whatever information we can dig up on them and uh be sure to head out there and show uh show jamie some love here within me once again buddy I want to thank you, and, and I do think that this video, uh, this interview, is uh, long overdue. But uh, but I'm glad we finally got a chance to do it. So uh, thank you for sitting down with me tonight, and uh, and yeah, man, I loved what you had to say about everything. So thank you very much, sir. DJX, thank you for having me. Thank you everybody for watching and listening. Thank you so much. <laughs>